Hey guys, welcome to my demo class. My name is James, and today we'll be covering some basics about Voronoi diagrams. So this is an extension of topic two, geometry. Okay, so before we get into the formal definition, let's consider some particular scenarios, okay? So let's say you wanna open up a new coffee shop, a new cafe, okay? And in your neighborhood, there are already existing cafes, maybe, um, maybe three cafes, that are over here, and we'll say that's A, and then another one, B, and then another one, C, okay? And so ideally, we don't want our new cafe to be too close to another cafe because that would cause maybe unnecessary rivalry, or maybe if your coffee shop is not as well known as a certain brand like, you know, Starbucks. So you wanna, lo you wanna put your, you wanna position your cafe uh, furthest away from all the other cafes ideally, right? So maybe somewhere around over here. And given that, you know, it's evenly populated, right? This would be the ideal location. So this would be D, your new cafe, okay? And if you already kind of, if you were already thinking about like around this position, then you have a pretty good intuition about Voronoi diagrams, okay? So uh, the more formal definition, Voronoi diagrams are a way to divide a space into regions based on distance to a specific set of points called sites. Each region in a Voronoi diagram consists of all the points that are closer to one site than to any other site, okay? And then so we would have to know the definitions of these, which are pretty intuitive as well, okay? So sites are these. So these are the sites. They're the coordinates of the specific places of interest. And then we have the edges, which are the perpendicular bisectors of two sites. And so we'll learn how to draw these and find the equations of these bisectors. And then regions where all these boundaries, this closed boundary form a region, okay? Okay, so let me roughly draw what a Voronoi diagram looks like, okay? So I'll try to draw the best I can. It's not to scale, but if we have point A here and we have maybe point B here, C and then draw D over here, okay? So the way to draw uh, the perpendicular bisector, okay, so first we have to draw perpendicular bisectors between each of these sites. And so firstly, we'll have to draw a line segment, okay? And then we have to divide this line into half and we'll find the midpoint and then draw a perpendicular bisector, a perpendicular line that goes through that midpoint, okay? So a perpendicular bisector by definition is, uh, it goes through the midpoint between a line segment at a perpendicular angle, okay? So the midpoint looks right about there. And so we'll draw something like that. Okay, and then we'll do the same. And then we can get rid of this part now because we're only interested in the bisector, okay? Okay, and we also don't want the perpendicular bisectors to cross over each other. Okay, so I'll leave it there for now. Um, between C and D. Okay, and then we wanna get rid of the parts where they kind of go through. We don't want them to overlap. So these three perpendicular bisectors were supposed to intersect at one point the, called the vertex. Okay, so my drawing is not perfect, but uh, the three perpendicular bisectors will always intersect at one point and then the fourth one could or could not, okay? It depends on where the point is. So this is the basics of drawing a Voronoi diagram. And so this would be a complete Voronoi diagram, okay? So if, but now let's get the properties of some of uh, the Voronoi diagrams, okay? So in order for a Voronoi diagram to be complete, you have to have the same number of regions as there are sites on the diagram, okay? So if we see over here, this is complete because there are four sites, one, two, three, four, and four regions, right? 
And the edges of each region are the perpendicular bisectors of the sites, and so that's what we've done just now. And the vertices of each region are the intersections of three of these perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so that means at this vertex, it's going to be equidistant to three of the sites where the three perpendicular bisectors meet. Okay. Okay. Oh, and also one more thing. Uh, anywhere on this uh, edge, it's going to be equidistant to both of the sites that this uh, bisector divides. Okay, so anywhere along this line, if I'm over here, it's going to be the same distance to B as it is to C. This is a very important property that you will use a lot in your exams. Okay, and then so in order to successfully solve a Voronoi diagram problem, you have to know these. Okay, so uh, for some of you, this might be review, but uh, we know that there are three forms of linear equation, right? So the first one is the slope intercept form. Okay, and then the second one is the point slope form. Okay, and the last one is the standard form. So I'm, I'm assuming that most of you will be uh, more familiar with uh, this form here, slope-intercept form. And the reason why we call this the slope-intercept form is because just by looking at this equation, just by looking at it, we know the slope and the intercept of this line, right? And so similarly, for the point-slope form, just by looking at this equation, we know the point that this line goes through. So this x1 and y1 are just constants. It's the coordinates of a point that we know the line goes through. This x and the y, these are just the variables, the independent and dependent variables. So please don't be confused. And then standard form is just standard form. So the reason why we have to know all three of these is because sometimes the question will require us to write our answer in the standard form or the slope intercept form. But when we actually find, when we initially find the equation of the perpendicular bisector, the easiest way is to use the point-slope form because we always will end up finding the midpoint between two sites. Okay, so the midpoint is going to be x1, y1, and these coordinates are the ones that will go into this formula. And then we end up rearranging this equation to make it look like this or like this. And don't forget that in standard form, a, b, and d have to be integers. Okay, and so the midpoint formula uses, if there are two points, so given that this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2, the midpoint, you just add these two coordinates and divide that by 2, and then add these two coordinates and divide that by 2. And it's a coordinate, so make sure you leave it in uh, coordinate notation like that. You also have to know how to find the slope of a line perp perpendicular to a line segment. So given that a line between A and B, line segment AB, has slope M sub AB, the line perpendicular to this line will have a slope negative 1 over the slope of AB. Okay, and lastly, you have to know the distance formula, which is just the difference in the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate squared. You sum them up and then square root them. Okay, this is from the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so just to elaborate a little bit more on the point-slope form and the slope-intercept form, uh, let us consider one example, y equals 2x uh, plus 1. Okay, so just by looking at this equation, we know uh, the y-intercept. So when x equals 0, y is 1, which is over here. And then when x equals 1, y is 3. And so the line should look <laughs> something like that. Okay, let me redraw that. Something like that? Okay. And then we'll draw... Um, okay, so, and we know that every one unit increase in x results in two unit increase in y. 
And then I'll write down uh, the same one for in slope intercept form, uh, point slope form, which is going to be And so just looking at this equation, we know that this line will go through the point 1, 3, right? And then so it's, it's the same line. And if we rearrange this, we can end up getting uh, two x, y equals 2x plus 1. So y equals 2x minus 2 plus 3 equals 2x plus 1, okay? So this is just to show how you can manipulate the point slope form to make it look like the slope intercept form. And then of course, if you bring everything to the left, right, we can change it back to a standard form. So it'd be negative two x plus y minus one equals zero. So now we have standard form. Okay, so I don't really like to have this negative. So I don't like to have the first uh, term start with a negative value. So I just like to change it to something like that. So this would be standard form and then the a point slope form and then the slope intercept form of the same line, okay? Okay, so let's look at an example problem. Okay, so this Voronoi diagram shows sites A, B, C, and D. Explain how you know that the Voronoi diagram is incomplete. So earlier we said that for a complete Voronoi diagram, there has to be as many sites as there, there has to be as many regions as there are sites, okay? So here we have one, two, three, four sites, but we only have one, two, and three regions. So that's all we have to say. We just have to say there are four sites. But only three regions. OK? Uh, the next question, find the equation of the line which would complete the Voronoi cell containing site A. Give your answer in the form ax plus by plus d equals zero. So this question requires us to leave it in standard form. But it's always the easiest to uh, first find the equation in uh, point slope form. And so remember the first step is to draw a line segment between a and d. Okay, and then uh, draw the perpendicular line that goes through the midpoint. Okay, so So this is what a complete Voronoi diagram would look like. And they did not require us to draw it. They actually require us to find the equation of this. And so the first thing is, let's find the midpoint. So we know that the midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2, right? And then we know that x1 is 1, x2 is 6, and we know y1 is 2, and then y2 is 0. Okay, so that would be 1 plus 6 over 2, comma, 2 plus 0 over 2. And that would be 7 over 2, comma, 1. That's the midpoint. So this is going to be the x1 and the y1 that, we'll use, that we will use in the uh, point slope form equation. Okay, so this is the coordinates of the point. And then we have to find the slope of the perpendicular line. And in order to do that, we need to find the slope of the line that connects A and D, okay? And the formula for slope is M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, okay? So this is not the X1 and Y1. This is for the midpoint. I'm just going to label it here, midpoint. And this is going to be the coordinates of A and D, okay? So Y2 is 0 y1 is 2, x2 is 6, x1 is 1. That's negative 2 over 5, right? Okay, now the uh, slope perpendicular to this one would be the negative reciprocal. 5 over 2. Okay, now we have everything we need to write the equation. So we know it's y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And so here we're going to use this coordinate. And for the slope, we're going to use this. So y minus 1 equals 5 over 2 x minus 
7 over 2. Okay? And then we're not done because they want us to leave this in standard form. Okay? And so we're going to multiply everything out and move everything over to the left. So we have... So initially I'm just going to write it as... Okay, y minus 1 equals 5 over 2x minus 35 over 4. Okay? And then... And then I'm going to multiply everything by 4 to get rid of this and this. So it would be 4y minus 4 equals 10x minus 35. Okay? Then I move everything to the left. I'm going to bring this over here. And I'm going to have negative 10x plus 4y plus 35 minus 4 minus 4 equals 0. Right? And then and then I don't like to see this negative 10 here, so I'm going to multiply everything by a negative 1. So that's 10x minus 4y minus 31 equals 0. This is the final answer. Again, let's look at the next problem. The Voronoi diagram shows the four sites, A, B, C, and D, with coordinates shown here, okay? Respectively, one unit represents 10 kilometers. This is a very important information, actually. Um, a, lot of you, a, a lot of my students get uh, these kind of problems wrong because they kind of overlook this. Okay, state which site a new business opening at the coordinates 5, 8 should look at to predict future sales. So let's look at where 5, 8 is. So 5, 8 seems like it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it should be over here, right? So that is where 5, 8 is. Okay? And so this point is in the region of A, right? And then so we should obviously look at uh, site A's, um, sales, I guess, to uh, predict future sales, right? Um, so this is also called nearest neighbor interpolation. This is a mild version of nearest neighbor interpolation, which we will look at um, when we actually have class together. Okay? And so you just say site A. Okay? So this is a pretty simple question. Find the shortest distance from the point 5, 8 to its nearest site. So this one, we just use a distance formula. And we know x1, y1, is over here, x2, y2 is over here, and so the distance is the square root of 5 minus 2 squared plus 8 minus 10 squared. That should equal square root of 9 plus 4 equals square root of 13. Okay, and then we're not done because we have to convert this to uh, kilometers, right? So each unit is 10 kilometers, 10, 20, 30 kilometers. So we have to multiply this times 10 kilometers. Okay? Okay, so that's it for uh, this demo class. Uh, thank you for listening and if you guys have any questions, uh, please contact Royal IB and I hope to see you in class. Bye-bye.